So what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to talk about something that um, comes up a lot on my channel. Something that will make your, your studio a little more enjoyable. Well, a lot more enjoyable. When I first learned how to do this, it was like groundbreaking, you know. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Antelope Orion Studio HD. Um, there's other interfaces. The, the Orion uh, 32, the Zentor. Um, other manufacturers, I've just uh, grown to love the Antelope brand, but it's pretty much the same straightforward concept for any of these interfaces, but um, the Orion Studio was laid out in a way where it was very beneficial to a studio with a lot of, um, for example, if you're a band, um, it has a lot of inputs, So, and it also has preamps, which a lot of a lot of converters and I wanted to talk about this real quick but a lot of high-end converters you don't get the preamps so it's a big disadvantage to a studio that's just trying to get going they want to invest some money and to have a onboard set of preamps there's other designers other manufacturers that do the same concept have the same thing going on but in in some of the older interfaces you're usually paying all this money just for the conversion where in the new age now you're getting you know boxes that have the the uh, preamp so if you're a studio that needs that then you're probably going to want to look into the Orion studio um, or the um, if you really want to you know get up there on the on the uh, superior chain go to the Goliath or the Zen um, they all have preamps I think the Orion 32 is the one that doesn't and it's pretty much catering to um, what I'm about to show you but the Orion Studio can do exactly what I'm about to show you and it can it can work and be a little bit more flexible for the um, the studio that really needs that flexibility um, the studio that needs multiple monitor outs they don't want to invest in a monitor controller. Um, the Orion Studio is capable of the 12 inputs, and then you have uh, ADAT, which can carry eight channels in and out. So you could buy, um, I think Antelope just came out with a, a discrete eight, I believe it's called. So that's eight more preamps. So for you guys that are you know looking to expand your studio, you can add eight more in and out, and you can do that via... Uh, ADAT on the back of this interface. I, I gotta look into that because I could be totally wrong. So, <laughs> long story short, um, I'm gonna talk about how to create a hardware insert on this interface. So, what what a lot of guys ask me is, Doug, dude, like I I recorded it like that. Like like I'll get to mix a guy's song and they'll be like, I'll be like, can you turn the compressor off? Well, no, I we we printed it like that. Oh, okay. Um, and that used to happen. It's not happening as much because a lot of guys are going in the box, but a lot of guys are afraid of, of going out of the box because they think it's like this big um, step forward. And I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can in this video so you guys can you know rest assured like, wow, I can't wait to try this. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it with an interface that uh, um, has both, it has three different connections, XLR, quarter inch, and DB25. And I'm about to turn this camera off because it keeps clicking. I just put in a security camera and it's going click, click, click. That, we can't have that. Um, so this is what we're going to do. The first thing I want to talk about is on the back of this interface, we'll zoom in. There's two DB25 ports. Don't let that scare you. I know guys are like, what the heck's that thing? All it is is like a big scuzzy looking cable for you newbies. You don't even know what scuzzy is. It's just a big looking cable, okay? It looks like a big computer cable with pins, something you would hook up your monitor with, but it's not, okay? What these pins correspond to is positive, negative, in, in the actual ground of an XLR or a quarter inch. If you look at a quarter inch cable, tip ring sleeve is positive, negative ground. So each pin is going to correspond to that, and that's all that is. So it can carry eight channels of analog information that's all that is so it's not don't get confused don't get nervous about it on the other side of this cable for the one in this video those are XLR so they're mic cables um, to you guys out there so this is not there's another format called AES which is digital looks like an XLR but it's not an XLR this is an actual analog cable it's copper in there so what we're gonna do is we're going to hook up these two devices, okay? In this rack here, 
or on this stand or whatever you want to call it. We have DB25 on the back of the Orion Studio HD. It has 16 outputs. That means eight channels on this. So there's two of these. So there's 16 channels of, of analog out. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we, after we track all our stuff and we don't want to track with a bunch of compression and EQ and all that, we want to hit the compressor after the fact. We got this really, we just bought all this really nice, you know, um, outboard gear and we don't want to use it um, and, and we want to experiment with it. Um, you know, you got a nice pair of compressors or, or a reverb unit and you want to be able to tweak it after the fact. It's, it's very, very, very beneficial. So the number one thing we want to do is I zoom in on this, this, uh, little signal flow I got going here. Is I want to find out and dedicate two outputs to the compressor. So once again, the top box is the compressor. It has a left right. So this is the left channel, this is the right channel if it's backwards in the video. So channel one would be left, channel two would be right. A, a great way to identify that is I always look at one is odd, two is even, odds are left, evens are right. I would say 100% of the time. So channel 20, like if you get confused and you're going down a patch bay or something and you're on channel 23, that's usually a left channel. 24 is a right channel. It's a cool thing to think about. It's a great way to keep yourself organized. All these years in the studio, you know, I learned a few things, I guess. Um, and, and no pun intended, I'm just joking around, by the way. So 9, nine through 16 is on the bottom of this, in this DB25 DB port, and 1 through 8 is right here. So in the case of the Orion Studio HD, if you look at the back here, you do have an insert for 11 and 12, which you can use that, which is, you know, that's, that's great and all. We could just put it on there and do that, uh, but that's too easy for this video. So we're gonna show you a different way to do it. So they did put a insert point on 11 and 12, which is really neat. Um, so for example, if you, plugged into 11 and 12 you could create the insert of 11 and 12 right here but we want to talk about the hardwired way to do it for almost every interface and once you understand this you'll understand it for life so on this db25 cable i want to find my inputs and you have to realize something if you look at the db25 cable that's not gonna, that's gonna zoom out. But if you look at the DB25 cable, you can see the number. It says three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to label one through eight. What I mean by that is you're not gonna find a DB25 cable that says nine through 16 unless it's a custom built DB25 cable. So think about it that way, okay? So one through eight is this. So we got eight channels. If I plug this into nine through 16, which I'm gonna do, you just have to think about it as channel 1 is 9, channel 2 is 10, channel 3 is 11, channel 4 is 12, channel 5 is 13, channel 6 is 14, channel 7, you see what I'm saying? So you just got to look at it that way. So what we want to do is use channel 9 and 10, which corresponds to 1 and 2 on the snake. So let me find 2 and let me find 1. And there's one. So, so we have two different channels. So what we want to do is we want to plug one into the left, like that, two into the right. And now we're feeding the actual compressor, the output of our workstation. So for example, if you have a whole session running, now we have channel 9 and 10 is dedicated to this compressor. Okay, but that's great and all, but we can see the meters on the front of the thing lighting up when we make our output 9 and 10 in our, in our workstation, but that's not going to do anything because we don't, we're not getting it back anywhere. We're not feeding it back in. A lot of guys don't know where the heck to put it back. So they're going, okay, well, now what do we do, Doug? In this case, I'm going to show you how to bring it right back in. So we're going to go out of the compressor 
and we're going to feed just to keep it even but with the Orion Studio you can actually dedicate it wherever you want to go with it but just to keep it you know pretty much um, sane I guess is we'll go back to nine and then we'll use this one and we'll go back to ten and I'm putting those things in very lightly make sure you, you snug them in there because I don't know how many times somebody's like done that and it's like what the heck man it doesn't sound good so what we did let me let me just uh, sort of recap I go out of this nine and ten I go into this which is stereo left right which now is nine and ten in our workstation then I go out of this so once the signal hits this it's gonna do its thing in this box it goes out of this and that feeds 9 and 10 on the line input now on the Orion studio a big note for you guys you have to use a quarter inch cable to run a line signal back in okay it has to be quarter inch it says it right here it says line use quarter inch jack only so if you try to run this back in with just an XLR like XLR to XLR you're going to have serious preamp repreamping issues and you're gonna have a hard time getting the signal to sound anywhere near good um, it's not gonna be a line level signal what I'm saying is you're probably gonna experience distortion so let's go back in and I'll show you what we do in the uh, software so in the software if we go over to the software here let's see if you can see that hopefully you can make that out I sure hope so boys so what are we gonna do here so what we have to do let's say we're running the interface USB mode okay there's two modes on the Orion Studio HD there's an HD mode that means you've hooked it up to an HD card or What's really cool about this is they've given us the option to run it USB 3.0. So we have a USB 3.0 card in the back of this Mac. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the USB side of this. So here's the USB side. It says USB Play 1 through 32 and USB Play 33 through 64. So what we want to do is really simplify this process and just focus on the first USB Plays 1 through 16 because we want that to correspond to our line outputs in the Orion Studio line output corresponds to the DB25 cable that we just hooked up I hope this simplifies it for people out there watching and gives you a, a, a confidence like oh I, I got it I got it because dude it does it gives any kind of audio equipment or software or routing or or patch bays or this or that it, it, it's it's a little intimidating until you you sort of simplify it up so the first thing we want to do is you can hold down I think shift or command on your keyboard and you can highlight all these and then we want to drag these to make them our line outs so that's the first step so now we have line out 1 through 16 corresponds to the um, the Orion Studio outputs in your workstation, whether you're using Logic or um, Ableton or or Pro Tools. So so all these dolls do this a little different. You can you can talk um, or Google or YouTube, you know how to create a, a hardware insert in Ableton or how to create a, a hardware insert in Pro Tools or how to create a, a hardware insert in so and so. So this is going to show you how to route this so it will work when you open your software. So you know this side of it's this side of it's good. So the next thing we want to do, so we have 1 through 16 now playing out line out, which is our DB25s once again. So that 1 through 8 is the first DB25, 9 through 16 is the second DB25. And now here's the part where a lot of guys get confused. We are feeding it back in to our interface. So we need on the Orion software, it says preamp. I keep pulling that, sorry. But it says preamp. But that's the inputs. So that's the actual inputs of this interface, 1 through 12. So we need those to correspond to USB 1 through 12. Now we are set up. The reason we're set up is because now we're telling the interface when we go to output 9 and 10 on our DAW or IO 9 and 10 on our on our workstation it's going to feed the DB25 that DB25 is feeding check this out man 
It's it's just like so much fun once you figure this out. So that DB25 is feeding the input of the compressor and the output of the compressor is feeding, which in the software it says the preamp, but it's the line in of nine and 10. So on the screen, it looks like, and I'll show you one more thing you have to do if you guys are getting, you know, a little messed up. Give me one more second. So now we're feeding back into the line input of the interface. The last thing you have to do is you have to make sure that 9 and 10 is set to line level. That's telling the interface that we're using a line input, we're using a line signal. What's really cool about the Orion that I spoke about in the, uh, the review of the Orion Studio is the ability to use the line out. There's a control, a volume control for the line out so you can actually tell your interface how hard you want it to push into the compressor. And that's very valuable when you're trying to find the right headroom, the right gain stage, the right... Um, now it's it's not dependent, you can't do one by one, you're just doing the actual thing as, as a whole. So once you find a comfortable level to work with your hardware, you're probably going to set it and, and kind of forget it. But it's really neat to have that option, especially if you're only using like two channels for, for an insert or something like that. It's really neat. So you can actually change the line amp. You can use the line amp on this. This little button here makes that linked so it links the two so we know it's a stereo pair of 9 and 10 and we can drive it or turn it down another thing on this is there's a trim knob so you can trim the line out to 14, 16, 14 15, 16, 17 all the way through 20 so you can actually lower the volume as it's hitting your hardware so you can find what works for your studio um, this is very very valuable super valuable and I think a lot of people, once they understand this concept, they're going to see a lot more value in something like this. This device does this. It does it well. Um, it's one of those things that we've incorporated in our studio just for that simple, simple fact. Now, the Orion 32 is on my list as well. I can look at that as a... Um, if you want to do your studio more like a patch bay and have ins and outs and have 32 of these, you might want to look at the Orion 32. Um, if you want the, the benefit of being able to track everything with the 12 pre's and then go back in, whether you incorporate some sense of patch bay or whatever, then you can, you can go back in and you can mix and use these inputs as inserts. And that's what we were showing you. So it's really neat. So you have your, um, let me back out real quick and put this up and then we'll end the video. But hopefully you guys understand that on a different level. I, I think that stuff was really intimidating to me when I first got into recording. Um, I did this video uh, a few, probably four years back now, man. I've been on YouTube for a while and I thank everybody that watches. Um, I know I slowed down a little bit on the videos, but that's, that's going to change. It got busy. It got real busy. And, uh, it's all good though, man. And I keep saying, "Oh, I'm coming back. I'm doing this," but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make any promises. I'm just gonna continue to do videos when I get a chance. Um, hopefully, this shows you how to create a hardware insert. Whether you have a reverb unit, a compressor, an EQ, if if you want to run it out to a mixing board, some people are doing that now, where they'll run. Uh, like for example, there's two summing channels here that I that I showed you in the review of this this Orion Studio is I can run out of this and out of this into the summing and then bring the summing out like like for example a dangerous music 2 bus you can go out of these 9 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 and then go back out of the um um D box back into a line input or you can run spitif out of the D box back into the spitif in the benefit of the SPDIF is it's not um, going through another stage of analog to digital conversion or digital back into the, the analog domain. So, um, I'm sorry, that made no sense. I'm getting tired. Um, the analog into digital, you're using the actual AD of the Orion, which could be super beneficial to your recording. But the SPDIF out of let's say the D-Box feeding the SPDIF in, and I'm just saying the D-Box for just a, a, a particular example. It doesn't have to be that. That's going to capture back all the analog information that came out of the DA. 
so you're gonna have the you're gonna have the analog sound dude the da on this is is phenomenal um it is it's it really is phenomenal it sounds it, it sounds impressive i'll have a guy that i did a mastering session for and we ended up choosing this one over all of them and i'm talking some big 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 converters that we were we were checking into so we went out of this into the d box or whatever a summing box that's another another video for a different day and then we can feed it back into the interface whether we do it um, the analog inputs or the digital inputs so this interface has that all I mean anything you want to do as far as routing and flexibility I like routing and flexibility and this is one of those ones that gives you the front end recording gives you the preamps and I'm not even I'm not even mentioning their plugins I mean I think they got that pretty covered they got mix with the pros and stuff like that where you get these presets that are killer um i used the s uh the 4k brown i think it was called um we have the hardware version of it and it sounded identical and i did that so we could have recall now the other cool thing about that is we actually have digital recall on the uh, the rack here so but i'll tell you what man when something does it and sounds that good it, it, it it's impressive so that's how you do it. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you got questions and I don't answer right away, I apologize. But I'll try my hardest to answer any questions you have. And um, we're looking forward to it. If you want to check out my reverb store, hopefully in the near future I'll be selling stuff from the companies I use. I started to realize that that would be super beneficial and it would be a great way for people um, to support what I do. It would free me up. To do some other stuff and do some videos and maybe upgrade my my videos and things like that um, I don't want to um, you know just put my hands out I would rather you know get myself involved in something like that and support the companies that that I've, I've grown to love so um, we do have a store I'll try to put that in the link there's there's some mics up there there's some compressors some some uh, some more compressors I think we got some compressors and no, I like compressors. No, we got some EQs up there. We've got some some mics. <laughs> we got some uh, compressors, I think. No, anyways, man, I gotta get going. My name's Doug Jenkins from imixnmaster.com. The letter N. Um, don't let that other guy. There was a guy for a, for a season there that was like putting his site up there and saying, "We'll mix your stuff." And I think I, a lot of guys were like not talking to me and getting mixes done i was getting like email and stuff hey dog man but no i've been very fortunate very blessed to say that um, um we're at a position that that we're we're delivering some really high quality stuff uh we've got to work with some great people and we continue to work with great people but we focus on mostly um, um professional mixing and and i do a lot of mastering and and i think that's where i'm at home but the professional mixing, I got a lot of great people around me that, that if depending on you know where you want to take your project, we can help. And um, we're looking forward to these next years coming up. This is sweet. So hopefully this video hit hit home with you guys and you, you learn something. And um, I'm getting long winded now, so I'm gonna get going. Peace. That's the Orion Studio HD, man. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome piece of gear.